There's breaking news today in the Canadian Football League. First off, Jamie Elizondo has been hired as the latest head coach of the Edmonton football team. And Three Down Nation just announcing, I believe they had it first, that Brian Burnham has signed a contract extension with the BC Lions. And speaking of Three Down, let's go to Winnipeg now. One of the big names there is John Hodge from ThreeDownNation.com joining us to talk some ball. Happy New Year, John. How are you, my man? Living the dream, Rod. Living the dream. <laughs> Good for you. Staying safe in your car bubble, I can see, there in, Winni- in Winnipeg. I- John, the craziness that went down with the quarterbacks in the CFL, Arbuckle and Nichols, you guys had been on this story for the past several weeks. So am I right in saying it wasn't as uh, big a shock to three down and you guys as it was to the rest of the CFL world? No, no, I don't think so. I I think if you go back several weeks, in fact, I thought that the, uh, the quarterback carousel in the CFL could actually have spun a lot faster and a lot harder. The reality was... Once the dust started to settle with Jeremiah Mazzoli, a pending free agent in Hamilton, Zach Kolaris uh, restructuring his contract in Winnipeg, I think it was going to boil down to, okay, we've got two teams left. We've got Toronto, we've got Ottawa, and we've got you know two landing spots for three quarterbacks because the forgotten man in all of this is McLeod Bethel-Thompson, still technically under contract with Toronto, opted out. He would be free to sign with any team as of February 9th, so... The reality is with with Paul Apolise and his relationship with Matt Nichols, of course, from Winnipeg, and you've got uh, Ryan Dinwiddie, head coach in Toronto now, with his background with Nick Arbuckle from their days together in Hamilton, or pardon me, in, in Calgary, it was only a matter of time before this move was made. And the bonuses on February 1st just uh, prompted the sparks to fly yesterday. So, no, not a huge surprise. No, no, but you, okay, so you key thing there is you said the Mazzoli signing triggered it all which I had not put together but you're right and two so I'm told La Police wanted Matt Nichols Dinwiddie's happy with Nick Arbuckle so almost makes me wonder why did this not happen ahead of those bonuses being due because it seems like everybody's got their guy and everybody's happy today am I right on that I think so but but to me the timeline is determined based on the bonuses and based on the leverage for instance you know, if, if Jeremiah Mazzoli goes to market, he's probably the best quarterback available. The leverage lies with him, right? And as the market gets thinner quarterback-wise, the leverage transfers to the team. So if I'm Ottawa, I'm perfectly happy to wait until July 31st because, you know, on the one hand, you might have Jeremiah Mazzoli going to free agency. The Bombers might cut Zach Kolaris. You don't know. Uh, but the worst-case scenario, if you can even really call it that, is hey, we, we don't think Toronto's going to pay Matt Nichols, so that option will be available. And guess what? Matt Nichols isn't going to be in a position where he can go back to Winnipeg or go to Hamilton and be the guy. So the longer you wait, the less availability there is for starting spots across the league, and your leverage goes up. To me, that's why you wait the longest as a team. I think the players who were smartest were the ones who jumped on deals early when there were more potential landing spots coming, and that way they got themselves a better contract, in, in my opinion. Good point. And, and by the way, I'm looking at my list of top free agents. I think we had all the same guys, John, just in different orders. And as of this morning, Brian Burnham is off the board. But Charleston Hughes remains on there. Enoch Mwamba remains on there. Greg Ellingson's off. Where do you think Chucky Hughes goes? What's your read on that situation that the Riders trying to squeeze him over $15,000? You know, I, I would love to still see him back in Saskatchewan. I think that he's a great fit there. You know, they've got A.C. Leonard on one side, who's great. I think that Charleston Hughes is, you know, he I know he believes he's the best pass rusher in the CFL. You could certainly make that case. He has led the CFL in sacks five different times. Somehow he seems to be able to do that and still fly under the radar a little bit with guys like Willie Jefferson and Ja'Gara Davis maybe getting a little bit more ink, a little more attention as time goes on. But That being said, if Charleston Hughes is not back, he'll obviously have a lot of suitors. One place that I think he could easily end up playing is in Toronto. They just traded for the rights to Cordero Law, who was very good for the Stampeders in 2019 in that trade that also included Eric Rogers. So the uh, the Argos need to get uh, him under contract. But even if they get Cordero Law, I could see uh, Charleston Hughes playing there as well. They're former teammates in Calgary, and they both have a history with some guys in the personnel department with the Toronto Argonauts. So I think he'll have lots of suitors, but if he's not in green and white, I think that we could definitely see Charleston Hughes in double blue come 2021.
John, with your football acumen, I think you could handle this question from a viewer very easily. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, how on earth is Nichols considered a starter, a better option than Arbuckle? Uh, I'll put that to you. Uh, my thinking is more experience, won a playoff game, just a little more just a little more experience. But how would you answer that? Look, I I think Nick Arbuckle is has the potential to be a very good quarterback. I think he did some fantastic things with the Stampeders in 2019. But let's let's face facts here. The man has started seven games. Seven games. Like like reading some of the responses, and don't get me wrong, I think Red Blacks, Red Blacks fans have reason to be upset because their team went three and five two years, three and fifteen two years ago, and outside of Jalen Saunders, it's basically the same roster they've got right now, which is which which had a lot of holes in 2019. And Matt Nichols versus Arbuckle doesn't doesn't fix those problems. Might might a little bit, but the other the other roster issues that they had and shortcomings that they had, and there were a lot of them. A lot of them are still there. However, I think over the last year or so, a lot of people in our nation have built up Nick Arbuckle to be the savior of the franchise, to be a guy like Henry Burris who came in and lit that team on fire and led them to a Grey Cup title in just their third year of existence. Nick Arbuckle is not a former MOP. He's not a former All-Star. He's just a young quarterback who's got some really good tools who might be, might, might be a good CFL starter. We don't know that yet. He was on a great Calgary team in 2019. He won four out of seven starts, right? He's not proven. Matt Nichols, is he the sexiest option, the flashiest option, the guy who's going to go and throw for 500 yards a game? No, but he's a guy who's been a proven winner. He's 45 and 27 as a starter in his career between two different teams. And, and we obviously know he's got great background with Paul Apolis there. So if they can find a way to get their ground game going, I think they probably need an upgrade at running back. But if they can do that, upgrade the running back position, have Paul Apolis work his magic in that offense. I think that that the Red Blacks will be just fine with Matt Nichols versus Nick Arbuckle. Again, no disrespect to, to Arbuckle. I just think he's not proven. He needs a chance to start to be able to do that. It looks like he's going to get that in Toronto. But let's not crown him as the next great thing until he proves that he is. And And so far, it's a very small sample size, seven games, only one four in Calgary. I just think we need to see more before we we hammer on Ottawa too much. For, for losing out on a guy that, again, at the end of the day, is not a proven starter in the CFL. Uh, we have more comments coming in, but I, I, I want to get to you on on another topic, Ottawa-related. By the way, John Hodge with us from 3downnation.com. Big fans here of John's work. <clears throat> Jamie Elizondo goes to the XFL, and Ottawa goes, thump, offensively. They also <laughs> lost Trevor Harris. But your take on how much was Elizondo's absence responsible for that? And then he's hired this morning in Edmonton. So what do you think about that hire? Well, I think Ottawa in 2019 was, was you know, it was kind of a perfect storm with the departure of Trevor Harris. Um, and then, of course, the departure of Jamie Elizondo. You had them scrambling last minute to find a quarterback. I know they came out and said right away they were, they were happy with Dom Davis. And in fairness to Davis, he was great the first couple of weeks there. People forget that he threw, I think it was four touchdown passes in week two. That was the first game Cody Fajardo started in 2019 and put up some like 50 points, beat the Riders. Um, obviously, that trend did not continue. He struggled a lot of the rest of the way. Jonathan Jennings struggled as well. But you're right. Half of that equation is the OC. And it was obvious in 2019, without Jamie Elizondo running that ship, that offense was just not competitive. They couldn't throw the ball. They couldn't score. They didn't run the ball very well. So I think that this is a great hire for Edmondson. Obviously, they would have loved to have Scott Milanovic back. And personally, I still think it's a shame that a coach can sign a four-year contract, bounce whenever he wants, apparently, while, of course, CFL players, heaven forbid, they get an opportunity, have to beg and plead and get on their knees and hope and pray that they can get out one year early. Uh, that's probably something that needs to be addressed. But um, point is, they lost an offensive head coach, a guy like Scott Milanovic, who was going to be an OC as well as a head coach. Uh, he's going to serve as his own offensive coordinator, do a lot of that game planning. Well, if you bring in a Chris Jones or you you promote Noel Thorpe or or you bring in a defensive guy from elsewhere, now all of a sudden, especially with the way that the CFL's operations cap works, you've you've got a disaster, right? Because you've got okay, we 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 don't have to pay Scott Milanovic; he resigned, but we're we're already paying these guys. We hired a head coach, and now we have to to shuffle things on. D you can't do that. So I think Jamie Elizondo, who actually worked a year, let's not forget. 
worked for a year in uh, in Ottawa with uh, when he was the OC. Noel Thorpe, the DC in, in Edmonton, is now the D or was the DC in Ottawa at the time. So they have history together. Elizondo obviously has history with Trevor Harris. So it's to me the most seamless option. And the the, the you know Edmonton wanted to hire Jamie Elizondo or uh, potentially they certainly wanted to interview. They did interview him, I believe, the last time around. Uh, fact is, he's a he's a great fit there. He's got history with Brock Sunderland. If you're going to lose a head coach in late January, like they did with Scott Milanovic, this is basically the best case scenario, I think. If you're Edmonton, finding a guy like Jamie Elizondo who's available, yeah. he's got history with your GM, history with your quarterback, history with the DC. It's a perfect fit. As was pointed out by Armando Moreno in Mexico City, and you're familiar with Armando, he said, first ever Mexican-born head coach of the CFL. And I'm like, we should be screaming this from the rooftops. I would think from a global initiative, right, and uh, diversity, but I see no mention of that in the Edmonton news release. Thank you to Armando for pointing that out. And just lastly, John, what what do you got cooking this week yourself at 3 that people are going to want to, I'm going to say tune in for, but you know what I mean. Of course, yeah, we, we've got positional rankings that'll be happening all this week. Last Just, just yesterday, I mean, two days ago, Dunk broke the Rogers trade. Yesterday, we broke signings. We had uh, we had Burnham this morning. We had Bola Combo going back to BC yesterday. Uh, Dunk broke the Matt Nichols release from Toronto. So we got all kinds of breaking news all week. We got free agents rankings. We got we got all kinds of goodies. And, of course, <laughs> insight and analysis from a bunch of our contributors. We're going to have a great piece tomorrow on the uh, the quarterback situation in Ottawa, some analysis from Santino Filoso. So I'd encourage your viewers to check us out and uh, stay tuned to 3 Down, especially as we approach free agency opening on February 9th. Well, I'm on there four or five times a day, so keep up the uh, the great work, John. I appreciate the time. Stay safe, and let's do it again soon. Cheers, Rod. Anytime. John Hodge from 3downnation.com. Eight days before the start of CFL free agency opening. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.